Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. A very warm welcome to St Patrick's Church Dunnock Moor on this 11th Sunday after Trinity, Sunday the 23rd of August, for this service of morning prayer. Our scripture reading today is Jesus' question, Who do you say that I am? and Peter's confession of Jesus as the Christ. Our opening hymn reflects on that. To the name of our salvation, Lord and honour, let us pay. Hymn number 117. together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that has passed and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Thank you. 
reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 16, beginning at verse 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you find on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. We sing the canticle, Bless the Lord, the God of our fathers. Bless the Lord, the God of our fathers. and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Lockdown has been a real learning experience in so many different ways. Homeschooling has taught me that I could never, ever be a primary school teacher. I'd either end up an alcoholic or spending a long term as a resident in McGabry. There was a time when I thought about being a music teacher, but taking assemblies and confirmation classes and so on is more than enough to remind me that school teaching isn't my vocation. Reading this morning's gospel always reminds me of being in school or university or somewhere where there's a teacher and a group of students gathered around. Jesus begins by asking the easy question and all the hands go up straight away ready to answer. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And all the answers flow out. And then he asks the next question, this time the hard one, but who do you say that I am? And all the heads go down. Nobody wants to speak up. Nobody wants to answer except for Peter, who blurts out the answer. When I was in university, I had a really good friend called Johnny, and he was the St. Peter of our class. He was the one who was always ready to answer the hard questions when the rest of us put our heads down. And we were so glad to have him there when we didn't have a clue what to say. Think for a moment about the difference between Jesus' two questions. Isn't it always far easier to say what somebody else thinks? It's far easier to give somebody else's opinion than to give our own. In life, we have a tendency to disguise what we think and feel what annoys us and worries us and blame it on others. People are saying, people might think, they mightn't like it, they might be offended. How would you answer those two questions? Who do people say that the Son of Man is? 
Well, that's probably the easy one, isn't it? There's so many answers. Some say a charismatic teacher, or leader, a gifted rabbi, a person with great teaching ability, with healing powers. I'm going to go on to recount facts about the life and death of Jesus Christ. But it avoids the big question. Because none of these is really answering the question, is it? Who do you say that Jesus is? There is no more important question that will be asked because on the day of judgment when the scroll is opened and your life is held in the balance, it's that question which will decide your eternal destiny. It won't matter who somebody else says he is. It won't matter if you've been a good person or done good deeds. It won't matter if you've kept the commandments and done no harm to anyone. What will matter is how you answer that question. Who is Jesus? The Bible tells us he's a king, but more than that, he's a king in seven different ways. He's the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. The psalmist tells us the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. No means of measure can define his limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can see the bounds of that love. No barriers can hinder him from pouring out his blessing upon us. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. And he's impartially merciful. He's God's son. He's the sinner's saviour. He's the centrepiece of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He's the loftiest idea in literature, the highest personality in philosophy, the fundamental doctrine in theology, the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. He's the only one who can supply all our needs simultaneously. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and he sustains. He guards and he guides, he heals the sick, he cleanses the lepers, he forgives sinners, he discharges debtors, he delivers the captives, he defends the feeble, he blesses the young, he serves the unfortunate, he regards the aged, he rewards the diligent, and he beautifies the meek. He's the key to knowledge, he's the wellspring of wisdom, he's the doorway of deliverance and the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness and the highway of holiness, the gateway to glory. His office is manifold, his promise is sure, his life is matchless, his goodness limitless, his mercy is everlasting, his love never changes, his word is enough, his grace is sufficient, his reign is righteous, his yoke is easy, and his burden light. I wish I could describe him to you, but he's indescribable incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. The heaven of heavens cannot contain him, let alone a man try to explain him. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. That's our king. He always has been, and he always will be. He had no predecessor, and he will have no successor. There was nobody before him, and there will be nobody after him. You can't impeach him, and he's not going to resign. His is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. All the power belongs to him. It's God's power. God is the power. God's is the power, and God's is the glory. In in this life, we try to find prestige and power and glory for ourselves. But the glory is his. His is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And when you get through all the forevers, then amen. Who do you say that he is? Is he your king? Have you opened your heart to him and welcomed him in? Or have you been putting off that decision for another day? Ecclesiastes 
chapter 12 verse 1 says remember thy creator in the days of thy youth before the days of evil come and the years overtake thee none of us knows how many days we have left to walk on this earth there are no guarantees no promises no certainties sickness illness disease accident natural disasters the actions of sinful men can all bring our life on this earth to a very abrupt end but nothing can bring our life to an end if we give the answer to that question when we know jesus to be our savior when we have surrendered our hearts and our lives to him when we have worshipped him and served him faithfully in our earthly journey then we will know that our life is only beginning when our life on earth comes to an end when our life in this mortal world ceases our new life begins in heaven what we experience here is only a foretaste of the glory of heaven and that great banquet prepared for us by jesus christ the bliss of that wonderful place which he has prepared for all who love and trust him for his is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever amen let us pray We pray, we sing the hymn in Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. From thanks and praise number 64.
confess the faith of our baptism as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. O God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together, O Lord our Heavenly Father, Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and end in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. We pray it with our lips and yet our hearts seek power and glory for ourselves. Take us as we are, renew us from within, and remake us in your divine image. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We live in a world where many clamour for power and prestige at the expense of others, at the expense of truth, and at the expense of justice. We long for your kingdom values to be seen in our nation, in our government, in our world. Wherever the poor and less fortunate are marginalised and abused, may your kingdom come, on earth as in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even within our church, we are not immune that quest for personal power and glory and status and influence and prestige and honour. We pray that you would begin the work of your kingdom within the walls of your church. Purify us from our pride that we may reflect your glory and not our own in the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make us more like Jesus in our speech in our attitudes, in our actions, that as the people of God we may be the beacons of your kingdom coming on earth, that we would stretch out the hands of love and compassion to your world and bring to birth your new life, always giving glory to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Conscious of the shortness of our days, we pray for those who have died and for all facing death 
that they would do so with consciences free from sin by repentance and embrace the way, the truth and the life. May we so live each day on earth that we are prepared to live forever in your near presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This is an act of fellowship we say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our final hymn, number 19. Hail, Redeemer, King Divine, Priest and Lamb, the throne is thine. God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>